A food safety management system may also include a hazard analysis at critical control point system, HATCHIP. HATCHIP is a practical system that enables food handlers to implement and maintain high food hygiene standards and to comply with food regulations and legislation. A HATCHIP system is based on the idea that if significant hazards are identified at specific points within a product's flow through an operation, they can be prevented, eliminated or reduced to safe levels. There are seven principles or stages in a HATCHIP plan. In general terms, principles one and two help you identify and evaluate your hazards. Principles three, four and five help you establish how you will control those hazards. Principles six and seven help you maintain both your HATCHIP plan and system and verify their effectiveness. Principle one, conduct a hazard analysis. The purpose of a hazard analysis is to develop a list of hazards which are likely to cause injury or illness if they are not controlled. For example, a potential hazard may be growth of bacteria in a carton of raw chickens when delivered to the loading dock. You can identify food hazards by monitoring and recording temperature of cold and hot storage equipment, monitoring and recording food temperatures using a temperature probe, checking and recording that food is stored within appropriate time limits of receipt of goods, visual examination of food for quality review, bacterial swabs and counts, chemical tests. Principle two, identify the critical control points. A critical control point is any step in which hazards can be prevented, eliminated or reduced to acceptable levels. Critical control points are usually practices or procedures which, when not done correctly, are the leading causes of foodborne illness outbreaks. Critical points include receiving, storing, preparing, processing, displaying, packaging, serving, transporting, and disposing. So thinking about the chicken from principle one, is the raw chicken in the delivery dock a critical control point? Yes, it is. It is a point where you can take action to control the hazard. Principle three, establish critical limits for each critical control point. A critical limit ensures that a hazard is controlled by a critical control point. Each critical control point should have at least one critical limit. Critical limits must be something that can be monitored by measurement or observation. They must be scientifically and or regulatory based. Examples include time, cooking time, cooking rate, time at temperature, for example. Or temperature, what is the ideal temperature, the maximum temperature or the minimum temperature. Principle four, establish monitoring procedures. Monitoring is a plan which includes observations or measurements to assess whether the critical control point is being met. It provides a record of the flow of food through the establishment. If monitoring indicates that the critical control points are not being met, then an action must be taken to bring the process back into control. The monitoring system should be easy to use and meet the needs of both the food establishment and the regulatory authority. It is important that the job of monitoring be assigned to a specific individual and they be trained on the monitoring technique. Remember the chickens from principle two? The store person may have kept a log of all deliveries. When they arrived, the time they were placed into storage and where they were stored. This will document if the chickens were stored within the specified time frame. Principle five, establish corrective actions. If the criteria for a critical control point is not being met, some type of corrective action must be taken. They must meet the standards established in principle three, must be based on facts and normal working conditions and must be measurable. Corrective actions may range, for example, from continue cooking until the established temperature is reached to throw out the product depending on the severity of the situation. For example, the chickens and the loading dock. Must the chickens be thrown away if they are not stored quickly enough? 
must they be used within a specific period, for example, 24 hours? Principle six, establish record keeping and documentation procedures. Accurate and efficient record keeping is essential for a food safety program. The extent of recording will vary according to the type of business, customer base and legislative requirements. Examples of records include approved suppliers list, goods received forms, cool room temperature logs and hot and cold food display logs. Principle seven, establish procedures for verification of the effectiveness of the hatchet plan. This principle involves verifying whether the hatchet plan is operating effectively. Verifying can take the form of procedures and tests, including random sampling and analysis. The most common forms of verification are internal and external audits.